Good evening. Uh, great response. Let's try that one more time. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first, uh, my name is Steve Van Grack, and I am pleased and honored to serve as the Master of Ceremonies for tonight's State of the City Address. I want to first thank, for those of you who were here a little earlier, the Richard Montgomery High School Jazz Combo. They did a really nice job. And we thank them very much. We also thank each and every one of you for turning out this evening, particularly in view of the weather. I think we have to feel fortunate that we don't live in Boston. Uh, that would have been a little bit too much. Um, we begin tonight, as we do with so many other events, with the uh, presentation of the colors. And uh, I would like to, to uh, ask, uh, ask you all that the Rockville City Police will now post the colors piped in by the talented William Shropshire of the Rockville High School Bagpipe Band. I would like to call Cub Scout Pack 452 up to the stage to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for the national anthem sung by my neighbor, Karen Rollins, and signed by Hannah Laskowski, a junior at Wooten High School. Can you see by the dawn's 
early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Before I introduce uh, the mayor, which is the reason why we're here tonight, I did want to tell you that prior to this event this evening, I had the good fortune to speak with all of the former mayors of the city. And each and every one of these mayors joined in their support for this event. And they were thrilled that our city recognizes the importance of the state of the city event. We're not going to introduce them here this evening. I don't think any of them could make it, but I want you to know they all give me, have asked me to convey to you their strong support for this event. Rockville has a history of, of wonderful mayors. Uh, these men and, and women, I might add, we're unique in cities. Four of our fa past five mayors have been women, which is a very positive sign. Uh, these men and women have devoted significant portions of their lives to the people of this truly great city. We have been blessed with the highest caliber of public servants, not just mayors, but also our council members and board and commission members as well. And that leads me to introduce our present mayor. Bridget Newton is a good person. She's a good wife, she's a good mother, and she's a good mayor. Now I have to tell you, Bridget and I do not always agree on all the issues about our city, but we always discuss the issues with respect, with dignity, with civility, and with an opportunity to understand where we agree and where we disagree. Mayor Newton shares with all of the mayors and council members and boards and commission members of the city a love for the people of the city of Rockville. Mayor Bridget Newton. Thank you all, and I will tell you that when you're up here, you can't see a thing. So um, anyway, just keep that in mind. Good evening, and thank you all very much for coming out on such a lovely evening in Rockville. I promise you we didn't plan for the weather. Thank you, Mayor Van Grack, for the introduction and your kind words. I'm sure Fred would have something to say about me being a good wife once in a while. I would also like to thank all of Rockville's mayors for their advocacy, their energy, and their visioning for the future of our great city. 
Their support in reinstating the state of the city address means that we can take politics and personalities out of the equation and come together to celebrate the energy that is Rockville. Please join me in another round of applause for the mayors who are gathered here tonight, and I hope there's at least one or two. And while we have the lights up, I'd like to go to the next thing, which is introducing our council. Council members Beryl Feinberg. <laughs> council member Tom Moore. <laughs> council member Virginia Onley. <laughs> and council member Julie Polakovich Carr. Each are passionate and dedicated public servants, and I'm honored to be joined by them as we represent the city tonight. Also with us this evening tonight are several staff members, and I've seen Terry Treshek, our chief of police. <laughs> Barb Matthews, our city manager. <laughs> Deborah Daniels, our city attorney. And it's Mary Lou Berg, our um, PIO, Public Information Officer. <laughs> Stefan Sandberg is here. I, I, I'm going to forget a lot. There's Stefan. I'm going to forget. <laughs> and I also want to give a shout out to the Gaithersburg Council Mayor Judd Ashman, Council Members Kathy Descula, Co Council Member Mike Sesma, Council Member. I'm sorry. It just went right out of my head. Thank you, Neil Harris, and Council Mayor, Sydney Katz. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming. In his address to the country last week, President Obama said that the State of the Union is strong. Well, there went my opening line. <laughs> but seriously, the state of the city of Rockville is strong also. And I would suggest that the reason our country is strong, the reason our state and our county are strong, is because our cities, and especially the city of Rockville, are energy centers for commerce, innovation, education, and transportation. Our cities are where it's happening, where people are coming to live, work, and play. Verbs, action, but more importantly, the very same vision that TCAT, the Town Center Action Team decreed for Rockville's future more than 20 years ago. Last week, I had the opportunity to attend the U.S. Conference of Mayors Winter Meeting in Washington, D.C. Talk about energy. 300 mayors all together. You have never seen so many mobile devices in one setting. <laughs> I only had one, and I was in the distinct minority. On Thursday, Benjamin R. Barber, political theorist and author of If Mayors Ruled the World, Dysfunctional Nations, Rising Cities, spoke about the importance of cities in today's world. In the face of the most perilous challenges of our time, climate change, terrorism, poverty, and trafficking of drugs, guns, and people, the nations of the world seem paralyzed. The problems are too big, entrenched, and divisive for the nation state, said Barber. He asserts that cities offer the best new forces of good governance due to our reign as leaders of the global economy. More than half of the world's population live in cities, and those numbers are growing daily. Cities are the primary incubators of the cultural, social, and political innovations shaping our planet. But most importantly, says Barber, Cities are unburdened with the issues of borders and sovereignty, which hobble the capacity of nation states to work with one another. After listening to Mr. Barber, it's clear that the city of Rockville is in a very unique position. We are the county seat. We have good working partnerships with surrounding jurisdictions like Gaithersburg, and with partners such as Montgomery College, MCPS, the county executive and the county council, and our District 17 legislative delegation. The word together can sometimes be part of an overused phrase, but in Rockville, partnerships are the future of our city. Let me tell you about what helps to make this city such a vibrant partnership. 
We work with, local gov with other local governments and the state through MML, the Maryland Municipal League. And on the national level, we partner through the National S League of Cities. We support partners like the Rockville Volunteer Fire Department, who incidentally, in a few short months, will, put it, will be putting into service a brand new fire engine, a Pierce Arrow pumper, I was told. Councilmember Palakovich Carr and I saw a Pierce Arrow at the car show, I believe. We partner with caregiver agencies such as Community Ministries of Rockville, Interfaith Works, Mana Food Center, Stepping Stone Shelter, and Montgomery Avenue Women's Shelter, just to name a few. And Rockville organizations like Peerless, RHE, and our fabulous community centers. Thanks to the Rockville Chamber and Ready, Rockville Economic Development Inc., we have a robust business community, which in turn supports the Rockville community. And we have a strong network of neighborhoods, multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-generational. We have embraced our diversity in Rockville, as well as our location, and we continually strive to be the best city that we can be. Energy, we've got it. Let me show you where. Let's start with our finances, and please don't fall asleep, I won't be long. In FY14, Rockville repaid nearly $9 million of debt and finished with reserves in excess of 22% of next year's revenues. We continue to receive AAA bond ratings from the agencies and we haven't raised our property tax in seven years. We have a robust capital improvement program, constantly upgrading our infrastructure to ensure safe and reliable services. We now have a strong financial advisory board, citizen volunteers who are experts in their fields relating to finance, and who advise the mayor and council on financial matters. Okay, financial part's over, you can wake up. Which brings me now to our volunteers who never seem to sleep. Rockville has over 1,000 volunteers, citizens donating their time to our city. We have volunteers at the Senior Center, volunteers serving on one of Rockville's 27 boards and commissions, volunteers coaching sports teams, teaching ESOL classes, knitting hats for infants, the list goes on and on. This past holiday season, the city's holiday drive collected over $70,000 in food, cash, toys, and gift cards, and distributed Thanksgiving baskets to more than 500 Rockville households. Community Ministries of, of Rockville delivered $25,000 worth of food and baskets. But it's not just at holiday time that we show our compassion. Every day, volunteers drive people to appointments, tutor children in reading and math, and help people deal with the bills and bureaucracies. Mansfield Caseman Health Clinic served 2,096 patients last year, and individuals from around the area donated, donated 1,585 volunteer hours. And clinic chairman Jim Marinan has proven that there are bigger and better things to do after retiring from the council. The kitchen at Jefferson House was completely renovated by volunteers from Clark Construction Group. Six months worth of work done in one week. Partnering with the Chamber on rewards cards allowed the city to leverage our money multiple times, providing needed support to caregiver agencies. Volunteers from Park and Rec, the Environment Commission, and Neighborhood Friends spent several Saturdays cleaning stream beds to protect our waterways to the bay. Aristotle said, the energy of the mind is the essence of life. I say that the energy of our citizens is the essence of our city. And if you have any doubts about that, just watch the replay of this past Monday night's council meeting. The backbone of our city are our neighborhood civic and HOA associations, whose members give countless hours of their time, and in many cases, their own dollars, prodding and advocating for a better community for all of us. Your mayor and council look forward to continuing to work with you and thank you for all of your energy. You energize us. Rockville is fortunate to have an energized business community due in large part to the efforts of Ready and the Chamber. We're home to the federally recognized Maryland, Wiz Maryland Women's Business Center which was recently awarded a half million dollar five year contract from the Small Business Administration. The Rockville Innovation Center continues to see companies grow and graduate, making room for new companies to come in. 
We are a great life sciences location and are also home to fast growing industries like cybersecurity, IT, and general technology. Choice Hotels will open its flagship property, Cambria Suites, this spring, spurring additional business and personal travel activity in the town center and Rockville as a whole. And most importantly, the city continues to have the lowest unemployment rate in Maryland, just 4.4%. With all of these benefits comes opportunity. The Rockville Pike Plan is one of our biggest and most exciting opportunities to pave the way for Rockville's future. No pun intended. Recent testimony from our citizens and property owners and recent action by the county and state re regarding Old Georgetown Road speaks to the need to narrow our plan, lest we discourage transit, bikes, and all the good that will come from a walkable community. It also puts us at odd with our neighbors to the north and south. We're seeing more and more that people want to work where they live and play near where they work, which encourages small neighborhoods to form in places we previously thought of as only a place to drive to or through. It seems counterintuitive, I know, but the theory of induced demand proves that if you make streets bigger, there will be more cars. And when you make them smaller, with less traffic lanes, drivers find other methods, like transit or bikes or walking. Rockville Pike is just such a place. Who would have thought that Rockville Pike would become the next best address in Montgomery County? Move over Potomac, here comes the Rockville Pike plan. <laughs> we are indebted to our planning staff and our volunteer planning commission members for their tireless efforts to envision this transformation. And after the 26 work sessions, who says we don't have the energy? These new neighborhoods will be on the dividing lines of Rockville the Pike, the Mark Train, and Metro. And so with thoughtful planning, we will be able to bridge the gap, so to speak, to build a nexus between the east and west sides of our city. And as we discuss and debate the design and zoning for these new opportunities, we must give careful consideration to the impact these new neighborhoods will have on the existing and adjoining communities and work to ensure that we create connectivity, parks, and gathering spaces. Speaking of connectivity, this past November, I was one of eight mayors from throughout the country invited to attend the Mayor's Institute of City Design in Tampa, Florida. Sponsored by the National Endowment of the Arts and the University of Florida, this was an incredible opportunity for our city. Rockville's Director of Planning, Jim Waslick, was instrumental in putting my ideas into action, and I want to acknowledge and thank him again for his help. Back in the 1990s, the city of Rockville held a visioning process, better known as Imagine Rockville. Through that came committees, the Environment Commission, Rockville Science Consortium, the Bicycle Advisory, Committee, Bicycle Advisory Committee, just to name a few. TCAT, the Town Center Action Team, held monthly meetings, generally with 50 to 75 attendees. Honestly, it was an incredibly energized time in our city. One of the ideas generated in those meetings was undergrounding Route 355 at the Rockville Metro and creating an at-grade plaza, providing a safer and more inviting pedestrian experience. This would not just be from the Metro, but would connect East Rockville and Lincoln Park to the town center. This green space could also be the gathering space for hometown holidays, farmer's market, concerts. Think of it as our own DuPont Circle. Maybe we'll have more snow, we could have a snowball fight. Now, I can read your minds, and some are saying it's too expensive. Well, that's exactly what people said in 1957, when that mayor and council made the difficult but visionary decision to purchase the Lion Estate, now known as Rockville's Civic Center Park, with Glenview Mansion. And then three years later, they built our host this evening, the F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater. According to Rockville historian Eileen McGuckian, Rockville's Civic Center proved to be the magnet that Rockville citizens imagined it to be. Well, TCAT was also ahead of its time. Think about Clyde Warren Park in Dallas, Texas, the Big Dig in Boston, Emparcadero Freeway in San Francisco, and Harbor Drive in Portland. Each of these projects have transformed, energized, if you will, their city 
spurring economic redevelopment, improving both the environmental health and the quality of life for their citizens, businesses, and visitors. The second idea I took to MICD was to turn the blighted MCPS property along Stone Street into a row of townhouses with owner-occupied mixed-income housing. How long have those tractor trailers been sitting there filled with old desks and old books? It's at least 20 years. I envisioned brownstones fronting Stone Street with garages and yards behind, adding needed and valuable housing and creating a more comfortable and pleasant walk from the neighborhoods to the metro and town center. One of the mayor and council's priorities is creating more affordable housing. And last year, I joined the mayor's challenge to end veteran homelessness. We have an opportunity to put together a public-private partnership. And a par partnership like this could help to accomplish that goal by revitalizing properties like the MCPS trailer park and creating owner-occupied mixed-income housing. Revitalizing, creating economic incentives and opportunities and energizing, joining together to enact one of our priorities. Good development is also at the cornerstone of creating and preserving an energized city. Monday night's three plus hour public hearing, the second one I might add, brought in almost over, a, over 80 people, excuse me, 80, not 100, 80. And although the council may have been lacking some in energy the next morning, we heard loud and clear from both sides of the issue People want a vibrant city. They don't want to further overburden their schools. I'm going to suggest that we harness that energy and the brilliant minds in Rockville to come up with alternative ways to solve our overcrowding problem. Is it using some of the two million square feet of vacant office space in the county? Is it requiring developers to pay a more realistic cost of that seat in the classroom? Is it moving boundaries? Or is it going to Annapolis with our county colleagues and delegation and coming up with a way to get our fair share. I suspect it will be a combination of efforts. And in the meantime, we thank the county for proceeding with Richard Montgomery Elementary School number five and renovating Julius West Middle School. As a city, as a county, as a state, we own this problem. Where Rockville goes, there goes the county. And where the county goes, there goes Maryland. We know that we are the economic engine of Maryland, and we can't rely on the past successes of our schools, our neighborhoods, or our businesses. We have to use our intellectual and creative energies to find solutions so that we can continue to grow in careful, measured, and sustainable ways. Just like any living org organism, if we stop learning, improving, growing, we will die. The city of Rockville has a strong foundation our developers will certainly tell you that. Remember, we're built on rocks. But stronger than rocks, we've had great leaders, mayors and council members, city staff, board and commission members, and our very active community members, partners all, who have had the foresight and initiative to lay the foundation for the city that energizes. The other day, as I was reflecting on what I wanted to say tonight, I reread my speech from our inauguration. At times, that day seems like a lifetime ago, and at others, only yesterday. Right? I'm sure you would all agree. It's a blur. I got to thinking about all the energy we are putting into our city, working together to make things better. And if you know how my mind leaps from one thought to another, you can imagine how I was reminded that Warren Buffett recently purchased Duracell the company known for its Energizer Bunny. Well, Mr. Buffett, if you are thinking of buying Rockville, you will need a lot more money to catch the energy in our city. I've said it before, and I still believe, together we can do great things. If we put our energies towards creating a sustainable city for the future, we will leave a legacy for those that follow. We will leave a city that leads, a city that rocks, and a city that energizes. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you for helping us to energize this great city of Rockville. Please stay to mingle and chat. Drive safely, stay warm, and may God bless the city of Rockville.